Morning you guys, it's Karen and I'm here to talk about the bucket training method or the bucket training game. It is a game but it is also something that you can use to train your dog to enjoy enjoy or tolerate anything um, and that can be from using eye drops on them, using ear drops, cutting around their face, cutting their paws, grooming them in any way. It can be used for anything. The idea is that you are having a conversation with your dog. So it's not training that's gonna happen in one day. This needs to be done five minutes each day, five minutes every other day if you can't do every day. Um, and over a couple of weeks, it will build up to the point where you can start introducing the thing that they are really not liking. So I'll tell you now how it works. And then I am gonna do some footage with Watson of me um, doing the bucket training method so that you can see exactly how it works in, in practice. But the only thing that Watson isn't keen on at the moment is his muzzle being touched and he doesn't love his left paw being touched. So I'll work on those two things with him. But but he's also pretty good at letting me, um, you know, groom him, touch his left paw. And for his muzzle, there's a reason. He has um, lip folds, which is a spaniel problem, and that one of them is infected at the moment. So there is actually a reason why he doesn't want his muzzle touched. But I will show you me doing, um, you know, feeding him the treats and how it works. Although it's called bucket training, you don't need a bucket. All you need is a small pot, a pot, a bowl, anything that can hold treats and that can hold a lot of treats so it looks full um, and preferably something that is translucent so that they can see there is a whole bowl of treats. If they just keep looking at the bowl, that's all they need to do. Um, they should be high value treats, so they should be something that smells really strong, so that will help them focus and something that is really appealing to them. There's not too much use in doing this with their kibble. There are people that, sh that show this on YouTube with their kibble, but I just feel if you really want to get their attention, do it with high value treats such as hot dogs chopped up really tiny. And you'll actually move along quicker with high value treats um, than with just kibble. The idea is that you start off by sitting them down and what you're gonna train them is that if you look at this bowl with these treats in, you're gonna get fed the treats constantly as long as you keep looking at the bowl. The minute you look away, you won't get a treat. So at the very beginning, it's constant. You're literally just feeding them, which is why it needs to be tiny, tiny amounts. Um, if you use a clicker, that again makes it faster to train them. It, it Because you're clicking them for the exact thing that they're doing right, it just makes it a much quicker process. So it would be, they're looking at the bowl, yes, click and treat, yes, click and treat, yes, click and treat. Like I said, I'll demonstrate this so it makes more sense. Then you, you can understand at the point they've, or you can see the point they've kind of got it and they're like, oh, okay. And it's because they might look at you and be like, you know, do something like bark or something. And then once they get to the point where they're looking at the bowl and you're like, yes, they've got it. You can start leaving gaps between how often you give them treats, but you don't, just suddenly leave a huge gap. That would be too quick and they would be like, no, I don't like this game anymore. You have to only leave a few seconds rather than one second. And then once you build that up, you build that up over time to being longer gaps, but it has to be varied. So you're never then just leaving a huge gap between treats because it's not then worth it to them to just sit there for a minute looking at the bowl to get one more treat. You would then wait for a minute and then give two in succession wait for 30 seconds and give them one, wait for a minute and a half and give them three. You know, you would vary it so they never know exactly what's happening. They only know that they need to keep looking at the bowl. At that stage, you then introduce the item that they are scared of. So for Watson, it would be a comb because he doesn't like his left paw being combed and he doesn't like his muzzle being combed. And so you would hold the item and show it to them. And normally if, if a dog is trying to avoid an item, they will get up and walk away they will back away, um, turn away. You know, they just want to get away from the thing that they know they don't like. So whether it's comb, eye cream, ear cream, whatever, you simply hold it in your hand, but you're still holding the bowl. At this point, it would become difficult to use a clicker as well. I've got one that you put on your hand and can just click, but even then it's difficult. This stage, it's great if you've got somebody to help you. It can be done on your own though, like I said, and I will show you how to do that. Um, so at this stage, you just hold the item. And so then they have got a decision to make in their head. Okay, here's this thing I don't like that I really want to run away from but there's a bowl of treats that I really want to eat. And I know that if I sit and look at this bowl, I'm gonna get treats, but that means I need to be near this thing. That's when they'll usually, if you've got high value treats and you've trained them that looking at the bowl gives them treats, they will choose to sit and eat the treats because that's okay, it's only there. 
I don't actually have to have it in my eye or ear or on me. I can just, I can bear that to eat those treats. And that's already a step in the right direction. Um, and it's basically that, but just in small, tiny movements. Um, so for example, you would then sit and do that until they were comfortable and they weren't eyeing up this thing and you know constantly doing this. Then you would perhaps say it was an eye ointment, you would put it near the cheek and, and still give them the decision. That's okay, you don't have to have this on you. You can run away, but you won't get these treats from this bowl. Um, and then you would start to maybe put a little bit of the ointment out so they could smell it. Maybe then get it, rest it by their eye. And it's just slow, slow movements like that. And like I said, the beauty of this is it can be used for anything, absolutely anything. Um, so if you would like to see how it's done, then please keep watching. I will video different stages of um, the training with Watson and I'll try and do it with both his paw and his muzzle because I think you'll see with his muzzle that he pulls away more and he's really, for him actually, he will, if I put the treats next to the comb, he'll go, okay, I can do that. But if I put the treats in such a place where he has to put his muzzle across the comb, he's like, no, that's... No, I'm not doing that. Even, even for those treats, I'm not doing that, you know. Um, whereas with his paw, he's a bit more accepting, but I think that's because of the, the medical problem he has. So you probably won't see a result from the muzzle, but I may be able to get him to a place where he will let me comb his paw. Um, so we shall see. I'm going to just hold this and you'll see. Good boy. You literally just start feeding them every time he looks at it. He has looked away there, then he's looked back. Good boy. I'm gonna put the pot on the floor. I just don't want it too near him, so it might be out of view, but you can see about where it is. Good boy. He looks away, he gets nothing. Let me drop a bit. So see, he's looked away a bit there, so I'll wait for him to look back. And you can actually move the bowl around so he gets it, so he understands the point. So I'm going to start slowing them down now. So he's looking at it. Oh, he's, get, he's got distracted by outside, so. See how he's distracted by outside, but then he remembers, oh, if I look at that, I get a treat. idea is to build it up until he's just staring at that pot okay so now what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna take the hand with me otherwise I'll eat it is get a comb and like I said Ke uh, Kev no not Kev Watson doesn't like this paw being touched do you see how he jumped back there if I if I get it to brush or well, he will let me that's the thing he's just not that keen so let's see about his muzzle okay not keen on his muzzle being touched at all you can see he's looking away so i'll get my clicker i've got one of these that you put in your palm of your hand so i can hold it so the idea is he keeps on looking at this i can hold this in my hand it is tricky like i said to try and do the whole thing and that, in fact what i'll try and do is i'll do it with my hand See, I was looking away there, so he gets nothing. So that's okay. That means he's not. I'm not ready for you to touch my muzzle, Mum. So 
I'm just going to start feeding him and then say, Are you okay with your muzzle touched? Good boy. <gasps> Good boy. So I'm just touching it gently. But he's, he's obviously decided that's okay. I can bear with that as long as I just look at that pot and get my treats. Remember, I'm rushing this, so it's it, it would be this, but slowed down. There's a good boy. There's a good boy. There's a good boy. Okay. Then I would try, like I said, with the comb. And you don't have to use a clicker. So if, if, it's, if you prefer it without a clicker, then go for it without a clicker. The idea is just that he knows he's going to look at this. He keeps on getting treats. So see, I've put the comb down and he's just looked away. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. He's like, mm, I'm not sure about that because I'm getting a bit closer. Yep, I'll have one. What about if I want to comb it? No, if I want to comb it. So that's moving too fast because I'm never going to get to the stage, as I said, of being able to comb his muzzle because he's got a sore muzzle. So he's looking still, so I'm just keep on giving him treats as long as he's looking at this. So I've moved it a bit closer and he's like, no, that's too fast. I'm not interested in having it that close to me, even for pork. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. That's a good boy. See, that's a little bit of movement close. So you can see how slow it needs to be. He's a good boy. He's getting a bit suspicious now. That's a good boy. And there he's like, no, don't touch me with that. <laughs> no, not ready. So move back a step. If that happens and they look away, then just move back a step. Go, okay, what about now? What about just holding it like this? And like I said, with his paw, he's so good. Well, I have actually done a bit of this and got him to the point where he's happy to have his paw brushed, but normally he would just look away. Good boy. And obviously you can't brush his poor and give him treats. So you can give it a brush because remember, once you've built this up, there's a little period of time where they're not getting a treat, but they, they should still be looking at this. Um, good boy. So he's still getting treated for looking at this and for not pulling away. And it all becomes quite a nice thing after all. I can put up with this. I think Watson's like, I can feel him pulling against me. Good boy. And so, like I said, it's supposed to be a conversation. So the idea is pulling against me and he's like, no, I don't want that. I don't want that anymore. And then you go, okay, that's fine. But then you won't get it. See how he's pulled it away there. It's like, okay. Can you give me a paw? No. Can you give me that paw? Let's see. Oh, good boy. Good boy. He's a good boy. So I can keep on combing it and he can keep on looking forward and he knows he'll get treats. Good boy. Now he's pulled it away. He won't get any treats. So it's up to him, you know, and I say to him, are you going to give me a paw? And he can see that there's pork here. And he's like, he's thinking about it. He's like, do I want some pork? Do I want it enough to let her comb that paw? I don't know why it is that paw it is sensitive. We think it might be ticklish, actually. Can I have that paw? Can I have that paw? No. Let me brush that paw. There's a good boy. Good boy. Good boy. There we go. All done. All done. And don't make it last too long. You know, um, a short session like this is enough for them to get the message. And it's more important to do a short session like this every day and build up um, so that it's not a long, intense thing for them of, you know, both something pleasant and unpleasant. Um, and then when you build it up, you should be able, you should be ready to go. <laughs> I should say actually that if grooming is the thing you're trying to um, train your dog to enjoy, then I have a whole video on how you can make grooming more enjoyable for your dog and I'll link that for That's you. That's everything. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this helps. The idea of this channel is to make dogs' lives better, um, whether that's directly, indirectly, any way I can. Um, so any questions you have, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them and I'll speak to you again soon.